sinus bradycardia. When we're talking about sinus bradycardia, we're talking about a low heart rate. Now, the sinus comes from the conduction system of the heart. So if you look at the heart, the, you have the SA node. This is sinoatrial. Sino is where you get sinus from. Atrial being is found at the top of the atrium uh, where it connects to the vena cava. The other conduction systems of the heart are the AV node, bundle fizz, and Purkinje fibers. But for sinus bradycardia, the SA node is intact. However, there's bradycardia. Brady being uh, below the normal amount. So if you think of bradypnea, which is not enough uh, slow breathing, bradycardia, slow heart rate. So, the normal range for the SA node is 60 to 100, which would be normal sinus rhythm. However, this is going to be sinus that's still coming from the SA node. However, the heart rate is below 60. Uh, but it's still considered sinus rhythm, and you can tell that it's functioning effectively because the atrial and ventricular rates are regular, meaning you can see the P wave is the atrium, and the R wave here is the ventricles, and so you're going to have an, e an even number. You're not going to have extra P waves or extra um, R waves, they're the QRS complexes, uh, in this. It's going to be an even amount. And at the time in between the P's and the R's, uh, the PR interval is going to be consistent. There's not going to be sudden changes and the heart beats faster for a couple seconds and it slows down. It's going to be regular. And the QR width, QRS width is also normal. So, like I said, each contraction is going to be consistent. You're not going to have some weak and some strong. So what can cause sinus bradycardia? Uh, for some people this is normal and uh, athletes who have uh, trained their heart and their lungs to handle to where they don't have to beat so hard, they may have sinus bradycardia and they may be normal. However, uh, sometimes it is abnormal, such as if a patient has an overdose of medications. For example, if they're taking a beta blocker and someone did or they didn't check their pulse rate or the nurse didn't check their pulse rate and they were already low, these medications can lower the heart rate and it can lower it to less than 60. Um, or uh, it could be temporary if a patient is performing the Valsalva maneuver. If you have a constipated patient, they may be sitting on the toilet trying to squeeze one out, and the pressure from the Valsalva maneuver uh, actually causes, it raises the blood pressure, and so the heart compensates by slowing down. Uh, the problem with this slowing down, whether it's the Valsalva maneuver or due to these medications when it's abnormal, is it causes decreased cardiac output. And this is going to show uh, the patient may have low blood pressures, they're not getting uh, blood to where it needs to go, and um, so that's going to be the problem with sinus bradycardia. Now, the treatment is you identify the cause, um, but some things that everybody might do is you may want to, if it's due to medication, you want to hold that medicine, especially if it's IV, and so you don't want to give that medicine anymore. Uh, if they have decreased cardiac output, it doesn't hurt to give them some oxygen, uh, so that whatever the heart is beating is able to be as effective as possible getting oxygen through the body. Patients may need an external pacemaker, and uh, as I say, external, it's going to be affixed to the, uh, outside of the body. If uh, this ends up being due to something long-term, the patient may need down the road to get a permanent pacemaker. Um, and a uh, patient may need atropine sulfate if it's an emergency, and what this will do is it will increase the heart rate. So uh, this is sinus bradycardia, which is a low heart rate.